Christopher. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday afternoon, Santa Fe. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening in. Alan Weber here from the mayor's office with Dr. Wendy Johnson in the screen. Uh, we're going to talk about where we are with COVID, where we are with the Delta variant, where we are with mental and behavioral health, because these are all wrapped up together. We've got um, good news and we've got some concerns um, about the arrival of the Delta variant. It apparently is significant in its transmittal. Uh, the good news is if you are vaccinated, you're less likely to get it. I gather that uh, there are some outbreaks, but 98% or so of the people who are sick are unvaccinated. So the data don't lie. If you don't wanna get sick, get a shot or two. So Dr. Johnson, I wanna bring you in now. Uh, we've had some numbers go up with people getting sick. They seem to be unvaccinated. Uh, we need to be aware of that, concerned about it. We also need to get vaccinated and take care of business. For sure. Yeah. So I just want to correct one thing a little bit. The, the vaccines are really great at preventing uh, serious illness, but there are actually a good number of people who are getting a mild case of corona from the Delta variant, even though they're vaccinated. They're less good at preventing mild illness from the coronavirus. Um, what you said is really true for hospitalizations, for example. Right now, 99% of the people who are hospitalized of the death are coming from unvaccinated folks, okay? So super important to get vaccinated because it's gonna prevent death, which I think we can all get behind, and it's gonna prevent you from getting in the hospital with severe disease. And it's probably gonna prevent you from getting that long form COVID too, um, which a lot of people are really struggling with and can be pretty devastating. Um, so, you know, we're very proud in Santa Fe County. We've got 80% of, 80, over 80%, almost 82% of people with one shot. We've got 73% with two shots. So that's awesome. We're leading the state. We're higher than the state, which is about 10% behind us on both those figures. Um, but I still am encouraging people, my patients, our staff, people who have symptoms, even if you're vaccinated, go ahead and get tested because you definitely don't, even though you might just get a mild version of it, you might think it's a common cold. And I think there is a common cold go virus going around right now too. Um, good idea to get tested and it just protects you from infecting other people who may not be vaccinated or even if they have the vaccine, may not have gotten immunity. Um, if you know that you need to isolate, even if you're vaccinated, if you if you have COVID. Um, and what about things like mask wearing, hand washing, social distancing, the things we did at the peak of the uh, of the pandemic? Are we supposed to be wearing those masks when we're indoors? What's what's your advice? Right. So, um, you know, the last line of an article in the New Mexican a couple of days ago quoted me with um, unpopular advice that I was saying that we should still mask up when we're indoors and avoid large gatherings. Oh, I think the unpopular thing that I said was if you're having a gathering at your house indoors, especially if you're eating and not going to be masked, tell everybody they have to be vaccinated if they're going to come over to your house, you know. Um, so, I think we can, you know, encourage our social circle, make sure we're trying to socialize, especially if it's indoors, only with people that are vaccinated. Of course, some families have kids and with school starting, you know, kids under 12, that's a little bit of um, a, a difficult thing. Um, you know, I'm sure the schools will take all the appropriate uh, precautions around mask wearing. But yeah, I am doing this myself and I am telling other people to do it. Um, why not? When I go into a grocery store, when I go into, you know, retail establishment, um, I keep putting my mask on, even though I see the sign saying, if you're vaccinated, you can take your mask off. I chose to choose to keep it on. Some establishments are still saying we'd appreciate if everybody be masked. And, you know, I obviously respect that too. Um, I think we're going to have a little bit of an issue here with all our, you know, wonderful festivals coming back and a lot of people coming into town from places that, you know, have been pretty much ignoring the coronavirus. And many of those places are where there is now outbreaks. Texas, many hotspots in Texas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Colorado, 
um, a lot of those places having resurgences of the Delta variants because where they're coming from places where people are not by and large uh, vaccinated. And uh, we're going to have to show those people this is how we do things in Santa Fe. You know, you want to enjoy our festivals, you want to enjoy our weather and our culture. You need to do the whole culture, which is, you know, wear a mask when you're here. And it's a, it's a, it's really a show of respect and kindness for other people. You know, there a lot of Asian countries. This is the norm. If you're feeling sick, or you know, if it's cold weather, and you know there are a lot of colds going around, even you know, a lot of people wear masks even before coronavirus happened. Um, so I'm going to continue doing that. I would encourage others to do it, even if you're vaccinated. Um, I would encourage others to. I mean, the hand washing is always a good idea. You know, that helps you against everything. You don't want to get sick with food poisoning. You don't want to get sick with a cold. Good frequent hand washing, you know, in healthcare, we promote that all the time, of course. So frequent hand washing, always a good thing. Um, you know, wearing a mask indoors, avoiding big indoor gatherings. Um, but, you know, I, like I said, last time I was on, I was out dancing on the plaza without a mask. Outside, I think we're okay. Outside, I'm not wearing a mask. You know, I'm exercising outside. I'm, I'm looking forward to going to a number of outdoor um, music events this summer. So I won't be a mask, you'll, you'll see me. Um, so I think we just need to use common sense. Um, social distancing, I would just say, be try to be smart. Um, you know, we're learning more and more as, of, as time wore on. Outdoors, you're pretty safe. If you're vaccinated and outdoors, I think you're pretty safe, right? So um, if you're indoors for a long period of time in a space that's poorly ventilated, um, really um, the, the social distancing is less important than the time you're spending in that environment. So I'm gonna limit that myself. I know the theaters are open and, and that kind of thing. I probably won't be patronizing those places for a while until we really, and, and we're seeing, you know, last couple of days, we've had 14, I think yesterday and nine cases today, uh, well, two days ago and nine cases yesterday. So, you know, we're, 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 we dip down into the two or three or four, and then we go right back up again. And so I'm going to wait till that roller coaster stops and we stay down for a really long time before I venture into some of those large gathering indoor poorly ventilated spaces for any amount of time. So let's turn to the other crisis that I have on my radar screen. Uh, there are different ways that we engage with health crises. One is something where you can take somebody's temperature, you can uh, have symptoms that are easily described, loss of smell. Uh, but now we're dealing with a much more uh, difficult crisis, which is a mental and a behavioral health crisis. Yeah. And we're seeing a significant spike in attempted suicides with drug overdoses, uh, with people needing uh, intervention to, uh, when they've overdosed, get, uh, get a shot to bring them back. We're seeing people, uh, frankly, uh, with uh, self-medication that leads them to confront uh, other people with weapons and guns or knives, serious uh, outbreaks of mental and behavioral health underlying conditions as we come out of COVID. You're right, doctor, there's a lot of celebration. There's a lot of uh, dancing on the plaza. There's a Spanish market, Indian market, folk art market, the opera, lots of reasons to be happy. And yet there is this undercurrent of mental and behavioral health where people are struggling as they come out of COVID. And I just want to put a, a good word out there and then get your thoughts about how we can help each other. We stood together during COVID. We knew that the only way through COVID was by behaving like a family, where we fed each other, we housed each other, we supported each other, we gave each other uh, all kinds of uh, support mechanisms, whether it was just reaching out with a phone call or providing food and, and income to people. Now we've got a disease and mental and behavioral health issues are diseases, just like COVID, that needs treatment. It needs community engagement. It needs support, compassion, and a lot of willingness for people to once again come together 
and address this next crisis, which we all saw coming. We knew it was coming. We knew that there would be a, a moment where people start to reckon with the pain and the, and the stress of last year, and it would have an emotional cost. So I, I know you're seeing this. I've talked to uh, people in, the, in our um, faith community who are offering pastoral advice to people who are in pain, not from COVID, but from post-COVID stress. But we have resources. We have, we have counseling services. We have the city has the alternative response unit that can come with a, a, an EMT and a police officer and a social worker. And if it's the worst day of your life, they'll, they'll visit with you and talk to you and get you some help. Uh, what what are you seeing and what are you advising people to do, doctor? Yeah, well, I think it's important to remember we had some of these problems before the pandemic and we two things happened during the pandemic. First of all, a lot of additional stress and isolation for people. And secondly, our healthcare resources were sort of diverted to the pandemic and away from dealing with just the regular amount of these problems. So people had a hard time getting care sometimes um, that they were getting before the pandemic. Um, so, so for example, the opioid problem, you know, obviously we had that before the pandemic, um, but it is worse now, I think. I mean, I don't have data for that, but my feeling is, uh, and one of the thing that's actually making it worse now is um, it's been a long time coming but fentanyl has finally really taken hold here in New Mexico and we're seeing it a lot um, and, and um, it's becoming easier to get. Um, people are attracted to it because it is more potent but it's also a lot more dangerous. So we have a lot more fentanyl around now. So I'm just, anyone who is using drugs um, right now, using opioids, um, you really need to be careful about the fentanyl. It's powerful stuff the normal amount of whatever that you were taking, if it's laced with fentanyl, can definitely cause an overdose. And it, you know, that's something to be concerned about. And if you know people in your life that are using drugs, it's something to really be concerned about. And we have to do all the things we were doing and just redouble them around offering treatment for people, making sure they know, Obviously, La Familia has a program for medication-assisted treatment. Um, Presbyterian Medical Services and the Guidance Center has a program um, around that. There's um, the New Mexico Crisis Line or Santa Fe Recovery is another place you can reach out to for help there. Um, there's, a, there's a new detox center that's operated by the county and Santa Fe Recovery and New Mexico Solutions called La Sala. It's down on Galisteo. And you can access that by calling Santa Fe Recovery if you need detox services. You can stay there until you're off whatever you're on and get treatment and get put into rehabilitation and therapy and treatment. Another resource is the New Mexico Crisis Line, which is 1-855-NM-CRISIS. And that's 1-855-662-7474. And like, like you were saying, Mayor, if you're having the worst day of your life, if you're feeling isolated, if you're feeling like you might hurt yourself or hurt another person, any kind of emotional crisis whatsoever, you can call that number and they will help you get help. And, and there are people that will help you and are concerned about you and will connect you to the, to the services and help that you need in the moment. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so I think what we need to do is just rebuild all those systems that got kind of decimated in the pandemic, um, including our kind of mutual aid systems as a community, you know, reaching out to your neighbors, being attentive to your family members and what they might be going through that they might not even be expressing because we're all going through a hard time right now or many, many of us are going through a hard time. So you kind of look at, you know, your cousin or your neighbor and you think, well, I'm feeling bad, but I can see they're going through more of a hard time. So I'm not gonna say anything to anybody about it. Um, but, you know, we really do need to reach out to our family, to our friends, to our neighbors when we need help. And we're the kind of community that I think can come together and help each other. So we just well, we need did to remember it. that and get back to it. We did it during COVID and it wasn't, it didn't seem at all uh, strange. It seemed like it was the natural thing to do. We're all in it together. 
you're sick, you have a fever, you feel terrible, you're, you have to take to bed, somebody make sure there's food, somebody make sure you're not going to lose your place to live. We are all really, really focused on helping each other through a crisis. But there are different kinds of crises. Some of them are easy to see, easy to spot. There's a temperature, there's a, there's a symptom that you can recognize. Other times, it's a more silent crisis. And what I want to just say to everybody who's listening or watching, this is the same as COVID, but with a different series of manifestations. This is the same as COVID with people suddenly taking, who've been very clean and sober for years, falling off into bad old habits of needing to self-medicate. If that's you or somebody you know, or somebody you love, somebody you work with, somebody you go to church with, now's the time to offer the same kind of help we did for COVID for this mental and behavioral health next crisis that we're going to be in. It's not going to go away unless we treat it the way we treated COVID. There was a vaccine for COVID. There's no vaccine for mental or behavioral health. There is treatment for it. There is therapy. There is support. That's what we can offer. And if we do that, we're going to come through this just the way we came through COVID. So please, if you need help, ask for help. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There was no shame in getting COVID. If you got sick, people didn't say, well, shame on you, you got sick. It's, yeah, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Here we are, the next pandemic revolves around the after effects, in many cases, the manifestations of COVID and the stress and the loss and the sense of isolation that people have had to cope with suddenly coming out into the open. Sometimes we feel like celebrating and Dr. Johnson will be down on the plaza dancing without a mask on. But the truth is sometimes we don't have celebration. We feel depressed or we feel alone or we feel isolated. That's okay. There's help for that too. So yeah. please reach out, please get help. Ask for help. The New Mexico Crisis Hotline, 1-855-NM-CRISIS or, or 1-855-662-7474. Very good place to start for you, a friend, a colleague, family member. Get help. There will be help and it will get us all through it together. It's compassion we're showing for each other. Any last words, Dr. Johnson? You are always yeah. wise on these issues. Well, I would just say, I, I will say one last word is naloxone. That's my last word. So as we're you know, working through this difficult time, it's important to remember that we do have harm reduction strategies and naloxone is a really important one right now. Anybody can go to a pharmacy and get a prescription of naloxone. If you or it doesn't, it, if a loved one, you know, it's not you, it's somebody else in your family that you're worried about, you can get it for them. So, um, and you can get it, have it in the house. Um, I think everybody should probably have it in, in their house or carry it around with them. You know, right now it's a good idea. So that's, that's my last word. Thank you. And we do need to get vaccinated. We get, wouldn't it be amazing if we got up to 90%? That of, would be. I think we'll get there. I think we will get there, especially, you know, as the kids go back to school and more and more kids. I, I bet we'll get there as a community. And if I haven't been vaccinated and I'm reaching the point now where I realize it's the smart, safe, reasonable thing to do because it works, where do I go right now? Well, you could call Christus, your primary care provider. You can go to the DOH website and they'll list all the places. And I think actually most pharmacies, you can get them through most pharmacies now. And one, one little question that's coming up a lot about vaccines is boosters. Maybe we can talk more about that next week. But right now, no boosters are on the market. I've got a lot of patients coming and saying, oh, I, I should get a booster. Can you give me a booster? We can't give anybody boosters after your two doses or one dose with Johnson & Johnson. We don't have any authorization to give any more boosters than that. Um, you're good for right now. There's nothing else. Um, I know a lot of people are even you know, wanting to go further, but Pfizer did ask for emergency use authorization to do a booster. Um, but that, you know, if that, if that gets approved, it won't be for a month or two yet. So we'll look for that. But for right now, no boosters. All righty. Welcome home, doctor. All right. We'll see you next week. Take Bye -bye. care. Thank you for everything. 
All right, my friends, I got a few things I want to talk to you about beyond the two items that uh, Dr. Johnson and I talked about. There is a lot going on in Santa Fe, and a lot of it's fun. A lot of it is free. A lot of it is community engagement. So let me start with um, some city business. The chart process, we've been talking about it for months. It's about to be voted on by the city council. There is a recommended consultant to begin the process of community engagement, community conversations around healing, reconciliation, truth. Uh, you can find out about it at the city website, web, website uh, santafenm.gov slash chart, C-H-A-R-T. You can sign up there to be uh, on the mailing list, the emailing list to be kept in the loop. There'll be a vote on this contract coming up shortly. Uh, there is a city council meeting, a governing body meeting this Wednesday night. You might want to tune into that. It starts at five and then another session at seven. Uh, lots of important items, important to our community, important to you, will be on that agenda. Uh, there are good, fun things to be done. Uh, and, and in addition, some good, fun things that we have done. We had the 4th of July uh, over at uh, the Santa Fe Place Mall. Thanks to Kiwanis, a great program. The governor came, spoke from the stage, and really poured out her heart, said how grateful she was to the city of Santa Fe and to all of us who live here for putting Santa Fe at the head of the line when it came to responding to COVID, wearing masks, uh, getting vaccinated, following her order when it came to public health, following the science, following the data. And the governor gave a huge shout out to all of us, all of you who made such a profound difference in keeping our community safe, healthy, and together and now open. Uh, there was a great car show on the plaza. Uh, Mustang Ed was there, Buddy Roybal who put it together. Beautiful car show and a real celebration of our 4th of July in Santa Fe. Now going forward, there's some more fun to be had. Our libraries have reopened. Very exciting. I went over uh, to be part of the reopening ceremony at the main library. Tomorrow at the Southside Library, from nine in the morning till three in the afternoon, there is a mobile consulate from the uh, government of Mexico, including the ambassador, uh, the visiting uh, consul general from Mexico to New Mexico will be there. Uh, vaccine event from 11 to three at the Southside Library. So just as we were talking a minute ago with Dr. Johnson about where you can go to get vaccinated, Southside Library, 11 to three tomorrow. Uh, there is the folk art market, open, back. Uh, I won't say better than ever, but more fun. I went up, up there uh, Wednesday night and it was joyful. It was like a family reunion. Tuesday night, I went to the Flamenco preview, another beautiful expression of art and culture in Santa Fe. Folk Art Market, two different groups. There will be booths, one set of booths now between the 7th and the 11th, another set of vendors between the 14th and the 18th. Um, it is a good cause. The people who bring their folk art to Santa Fe they make in those few days here selling their amazing folk art products, they make in a very few days enough money to support themselves, their families, their villages often for the entire year. It is social enterprise. So if you're interested, there may be a few tickets left. Check out the folk art market. Uh, our friend Lisa Law, one of the great figures of the 60s, uh, present at Woodstock and at many events uh, is opening up her museum of the 60s this afternoon at five o'clock, 76 East San Francisco Street with posters from the 60s, music, uh, representation, uh, photos that she took of some of the great iconic rock and roll musicians from the 60s, Janis Joplin, Bob Dylan, uh, Dennis Hopper photos, Peter Fonda, uh, people that um, Lisa was friends with from the hog farm, Wavy Gravy. It's a great show. So check it out. Um, there is coming up 
the 11th of July, the Pecos League All-Star Game, uh, Fort Marcy Ballpark, 2 o'clock Sunday. Very exciting, very fun that we get to host that right here in Santa Fe. Uh, the fire department will be hosting cool downs uh, Saturday, July the 17th, 1130 at Swan Park. Saturday, July 24th, 1130, Franklin Miles Park. A uh, chance to put on a swimsuit and run through a, a fire department sprinkler. It's great fun uh, for the kids, for everybody of any age to just have a little cool down in the hot summer sun. Uh, and enjoy the good folks who are our fire department. They are such community-minded individuals. They want everybody to stay safe, have fun, and enjoy Santa Fe. So the fire department-sponsored cool-downs are coming up. Um, four free op operas uh, will be sponsored this summer. Our dear friends at the Santa Fe Opera, with a little bit of help from the Kiwanis and from the city of Santa Fe uh, will be offering free operas uh, August 1st and 2nd and 8th and 9th uh, at the park adjacent to the Santa Fe Place Mall, a pre-show at 3.30 of local talent, and then a giant screen like you see at football games or baseball games where there's that big screen in the outfield or up above in the, in the dome an opera uh, free of charge uh, at the uh, uh, mall, uh, the park adjacent to the mall, August 1 and 2, 8 and 9, a pre-show for our youth at 3.30. If you've never been to an opera, you don't know if you like opera, you don't know if you don't like opera, or you think, I'd love to see an opera, but it's always uh, expensive or sold out, these are free of charge. So please check them out and tell the folks from the opera, thank you for making this possible, making opera available to everyone who lives here in Santa Fe. It is a gift. It is a joy. It's part of the reopening of our city. That about wraps it up for today. Uh, a lot of good stuff going on. Music back on the plaza. Um, we are open. We are safe when we get vaccinated. We are having fun. The parks are open. The trails are open. The city is hiring. We are booting up our uh, ability to respond to community needs as we rehire, reopen, enter this new fiscal year that started July 1. I want to come back to the one concern that is really foremost on my mind, and that is not just our safety from COVID, but our safety after COVID. Our ability to take care of each other when it comes time to think about mental health and behavioral health. If you are struggling or you know someone who is having a hard time by virtue of a year and a half of isolation and challenge, please ask for and get help. Uh, there's lots of ways to get help. As Dr. Johnson said, if it comes down to it, 911 can get the alternative response unit to come see you or someone you are worried about. The crisis hotline, 1-855-NM-CRISIS will get you help or someone you love, someone you're worried about. We made it through COVID by standing together, working together, helping each other, sometimes crying together when we lost somebody we love, but always caring for each other, always showing compassion, always showing community. That's the sense of Santa Fe. That's why we are the city different. So please, as we head into the next phase this summer, as we reopen, please take care of yourself, not just from COVID, but mentally and in every other way. Take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of our community, Together, we will come together, we will stay together, we will stand together to take care of the city we love, the city of Santa Fe. You take care, everybody, and I will see you next week. Have a great weekend.